I don't see 200 ex extra pounds of, of body fat on them. It's 200 pounds of broken promises to themselves. Oh. Your word yes. has value. Yes. And when you speak something, you start to believe that you can actually make that happen. Your word is so powerful because you know everything you say comes to fruition. Stop talking about it because every time you say you're gonna do it and you don't do it, you lose more belief in yourself. You're gonna fall further and further into that rut and you won't be able to get out. Your word has to be more powerful than your reasons or ex your oh, wow. excuses why you cannot. Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. I'm Ed Milet. Today, we're talking transformations. And I have been chasing these two for, I don't know, a couple months probably, right? <laughs> to be on the show. And so these folks to my left, you definitely recognize them. For five and a half years or so, they were on ABC hosting the show Extreme Weight Loss. And they've turned into fitness icons. You can tell if you're watching the YouTube version this from looking at both of them. They're two of the fittest people that are married <laughs> together in the history of the world and making me feel very out of shape <laughs> to start out the show today. But I'm honored to have you guys here because they're experts on transformation. So we're gonna talk about that topic today throughout, not just in your body, but in your life. So if you're interested in making a transformation, we're gonna talk about the tools and skills and resources to do that with two experts today. So I have Chris and Heidi Powell with me here today. Thanks for being here, thank guys. Thank you, thank you for having us. Uh, I was actually gonna say- Thank you so much. This, is a, this really is a dream come true for us. Awesome, thank And awesome. you, I was gonna say, you make us feel out of shape. Like, look at you. Stop it. You look amazing. We've been doing this off camera. They've been trying to make me feel better about myself for about a half hour, everybody. Well, just so you know. We've been watching you for true. quite some time and you really, you really are an inspiration for all of us. Thank so. you, man. Yeah. Well, you've done that for me for, I mean, I, I've told you this too, and that's why I pursued you guys because I think, you know, a lot of people talk about being able to change their life or, but you've proven it. Like there's data to prove that the two of you know how to not only change your own lives, which we'll talk about today, but you've changed just so many people's lives, both emotionally, physically, financially in some cases. And so well, I want to talk about all that today. I know that's what everyone's dying yeah. for me to cover with you guys. So but I want to start with the two of you, because I think you're both so interesting. So <laughs> if we could just go back, like tell them, because I think it's a, a testimony of transformation. Everything in your life happens for you and not to you is what I teach yeah. people, right? And kind of that, you guys sort of embody that even like how you met. Yeah. So one of you tell me about how you guys met. Oh my gosh, well, you know, I go back, um, if you rewind about 15 years, you know, um, after getting a degree in exercise science and I was, I was training for quite some time, um, I, was, uh, I ended up landing a gig as the, the Good Morning Arizona, the, the fitness guy. Okay. And um, after about five months of, of doing that, uh, we had more and more people that were four, five, six hundred pounds writing in asking for help. Wow. And, um, you know, it, I, at the time, this is like early 2000s, so you just, you don't see that a lot. You know, and NBC was working on a show called The Biggest Loser at sure. the time. So that was the very first, the first that you really start to, to kind of highlight the morbid obese and the super obese. And so I, I ended up, um, there was a gentleman who was like 635 pounds at the How time. How big? 635 pounds. Yes, okay. the guy that started it all. And this yeah. this will lead to actually how yeah. we met. This, yeah. There's, there's we'll a little bit there. of a backstory. I hope you don't mind here. No, I want to You're know. like, where is he going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching your face, Heidi. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, and he reached out to me and, and I was just doing a, a gig on the, on the morning news at the time because I was just passionate about fitness and so, yeah. so excited about this stuff. And I had no idea how I could possibly help him, but I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And he mm -hmm. wrote me this huge long letter just asking for help, saying that, you know, he's, he, we're the same age. His doctor just left his house. He was stuck in his basement for two years and the doctor said he wouldn't live to see 30. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I ended up, um, a week later, I emailed him, asked him for his address, said, I just kinda, I wanna come meet you. Mm -hmm. And I, I showed up at his door. I knew he was gonna be there because he hadn't left in two leave. years. Wow. And we sat down, we started talking for like 10 minutes. I was like, dude, this guy's a bro. He's just really? awesome. Great sense of humor. He was just trapped in the 635 pound body. Wow. And, um, and I said, dude, I have no idea where this is gonna go, but uh, I'll be back on Tuesday. And so I showed up every other day for two years. Oh my gosh. He ended up losing 400 pounds oh, and became crazy? my best friend and in the process and it was just the most incredible experience for both of us and and at the time so he lost the weight and once he had actually lost the weight um you know he had all the skin mm. his teeth were rotted out he had coke bottle glasses so i reached out to some of my doctor friends and i got him five surgeries for the skin and got his eyes done and his teeth and the guy was he looked like a model and oh so God. I'm, gonna, I'm about to date us here. He ended up posting his before and afters on MySpace. <laughs> you remember MySpace? Sure. <laughs> and, and it went viral. Within two weeks, we were getting hit up for Oprah and the Today Show in 2020. 
And so wow. it was this crazy whirlwind. This is back in 2005. I was okay. making these systems that would stack crazy. all of your meals in there. There's a timer that goes off every three hours and it would tell you to eat again. Okay. So it was a cool concept. Yeah, so, it sure was. But I'm not a businessman. I'm just mm -hmm. a trainer out there just trying to mm -hmm. help a bunch of people. So I started, I saved all my money. I sent it over to a factory in China, not knowing what I was doing. Mm. I ended up purchasing 12,500 units. I borrowed a lot of money. The container ends up making it over here to, to San Pedro. I'm standing there as it's coming off the docks. Yeah. They open up the very first cardboard box and I pull this thing out and it was just oh no. trash. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And I, I lost it. Mm. I, I literally, I crumbled I'm mentally it broke me because mm -hmm. that was all of them. It was a couple hundred, it's probably about 150,000 that I'd saved up as a trainer. Um, another $200,000 that I'd borrowed from other people. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting on a massive container of product that I couldn't sell. Oh it wasn't gosh. even what I ordered. Mm -hmm. And um, so I broke. And at the same time, I was, I was still training hard. Mm -hmm. I ended up um, herniating a disc in my, in my back, my mm -hmm. L5S1. And uh, this is back in 06. So a lot of the doctors back in that oh. day, they're like, here, take this. It's going to make you feel better. You can function on this. It's called Vicodin. Mm. The Vicodin, while it helped kill the pain in my back, mm. it also helped kill the pain mm. of my financial mm. downslide. Mm. And pretty soon when my back, the, it, as far as the pain goes, it was totally managed. Mm -hmm. But I still felt the financial pain and the emotional pain mm. of losing everything. Oh. And, and ego, though, just, and I'm just going to speak yeah. totally transparently here like but um all my friends like i was i was one of the i was the guy that made it i yeah. was on i was on the morning news and i was yep. helping all these people and i was the guy mm -hmm. and and they didn't i didn't i was too prideful to let them know that i was hurting mm -hmm. that i was i was hooked on vicodin that i had lost everything because i just had to i had to be that guy for every i was like dude it's chris powell he's always yeah. got a smile on his face yeah. he's always so happy he's always got mm. and i would go home and i was in such a deep depression mm. um and i was using opiates to wow. to numb that pain i ended up after two years and losing everything um i lost the the roof over my head and so i had to i move out of my i was crashing at my buddy's condo he's he told me one day he's like dude you, you can't stay here anymore because I couldn't, I couldn't afford to pay him. I lost everything. I was, I was paying for basically every every dime I could make. I was in two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of debt. Yeah. I, and I was hooked on painkillers for two years. Yeah. And I, I haven't shared that that part of the story. Man, I, um, I can be honest with you. I'm so listening to you. First off, I one of the things I've always loved about you is your vulnerability. It's one of the things that makes people connect with you. I just want to acknowledge that. But I didn't know this part of the story either. I think there's probably millions of people who know you, this is super pumped up, yeah. energetic dude who just always wins. Yeah. That's the exterior, right? Sure. And so I appreciate you you being willing to share that. That that even surprises me to hear, and I've done a lot of research on you, so appreciate that. It, I, I've learned that the more open I am about this, the more I can talk about it. It's part of my continued rehabilitation. Hmm. You know, and, and now, granted, it was, um, it was when I lost everything, and I was also surrounded, though, by other people that were also they were also hooked on opiates, which is, you see that it's a really, it's a common thread mm -hmm. among other people that are addicted. Now, granted, it was always my, well, I got a prescription for it because, mm -hmm. because of my back. Makes I got a hernia and a disc. Yep. Yeah, so it, I, I totally covered up with being legit, but after two years of realizing that I'm, I can only function with it, mm -hmm. I got a major problem here and I got to stop. Wow. And by the way, I, I lost everything. So um, it was when I, I uh, my, my old roommate said, you got to go. The neighbor at the time, he saw me packing up everything. And I literally had a duffel bag in my, in my car. That was Incredible. it. He saw me throwing my bag in the car. He's like, dude, come crash on my couch for a little bit. Not because I needed a place to stay, but because he, he knew what was happening with the opiates. And so I crashed on his couch and I, I just grinded it out for three, day, three good days. Whoa. And he'd bring me water and everything. And I just Brother. went cold turkey. Yep. Brother. And then and from there, I spent six months going around from couch to couch. In fact, David's family, my buddy David, that I helped lose 400 pounds, they opened up their doors to me. I slept on their couch for three months. Yeah. So you're, t that just, by the way, I mean, I, I know a lot about you. That blows my Isn't mind. Isn't that crazy? That it, blows my mind that for often. you to, no, and for you to share that, man, because there's, there's so many people that relate to this. Everything on the outside looks great and everything's falling apart on the inside, right? There's also people that have some of these addictions. It could be an opiate, it could be, to, it could be to another drug, it could be to alcohol. Yeah. So for you to share that, man, I had no idea we were 
we were going to go there. So you literally sort of grinded out the detox sitting there on the couch and then just floated for six months. Yeah. Little do you know during that time, you're about to meet your dream woman. Right. You're about to. <laughs> and, and, and all of these things, as we start to talk about them too, like they were ironically happening for you. Yeah. I don't think if you have this addiction, maybe you don't connect as well with people who have a food addiction. Right. You know, I mean, it's odd that sometimes these, the, the worst parts of our life, they really are happening for us. Doesn't feel like it at the time, but like now that I know the after, all the seeds are being planted that make yes. you you now. Yes. You had your first big transformation, you had your big weight loss client, you had the connection, you probably got over what it's like to just be famous as your only identity, I, I would think, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah. But, but anyway, so take us from there. Does that somehow, I think I know where this goes, where the two of you end up meeting each other. Yeah, and, and you, you nailed it. I actually had no understanding of addiction at all before. Mm. I, had no, I, I had no understanding of David, how he could possibly be addicted to food. In fact, I really thought that his weight loss was simply physiology and I carb cycled him down and I built a progressive overload for his cardio. So it all made, it made sense on paper for science. Mm. And, um, it, and, and I, I had no concept of addiction mm. until I realized that I was an addict myself. Wow. And it gave me uh, the whole new gift of empathy that if I didn't have it, I couldn't possibly help anybody else yeah. through a journey of transformation. Mm. With, and, and it gave me just a whole new appreciation for human struggle and what, we'll, what we do to try to escape and try to alleviate the pain of that daily emotional struggle. Yeah. So, I really uh, believe this, and I, I don't mean to jump in there, but everyone should hear this. Like, and this is a well said thing, but it's really true. Your test can actually end up being what you're doing right now. It could be your testimony. Yeah. But the test you go through can end up becoming your testimony. I hope there's all these people, man, who know you as this icon in the space. This is the real you. Like, this is why I wanted you on the show. I had no idea we were going to go this far with it. But, like, it did prepare you for the greatness that was coming. And all the other ups and downs that were to come even after this that we'll that's, talk about today, too, right? So, and it's so beautifully put. You're right. Your test, if you choose for it to, yeah. can become your testimony. And that's mm -hmm. exactly, like, that. that's... That has become my life, mm. and I wouldn't change it for the world. I look back, and if, if that had not happened, I wouldn't be sitting here with you right now, and I wouldn't have had the, the amazing ability and the, and the opportunity to help a lot of other people. I so. do think, though, it took a, a few years for you, for him to realize that sure. um, all of that was happening for a reason. I don't even think you actually identified as an I addict didn't. until years after you and I had met and we had started the show. So we truly met at probably the best point possible. Mm. It was him straight out of his car, straight off of his opiates. Me, I was still trying to figure out this eating disorder and you know life without marriage. If you looked at the two of you, you would never know that this relationship came out of an eating disorder and an opiate addiction. You totally flat broke, you divorced, and then this yeah. these two people converge and end up within a, a very short window of time having one of the most popular television shows of the last couple <laughs> decades on television. It's like mind blowing that this right. is, even probably you hearing it back, it's like, wow, that is pretty cool, right? Yeah. But it, and, and like you are, you are right though. Like I believe, and we have said this, like that is one thing that's never changed is from the moment we met, we all, even before anything happened, like before there was, we didn't date for months because we were like, you know what? We just want, I, like I was not interested in a man. Mm. He was not interested in a woman, but I, it's, he had it. Well, pre I'm interested in women, <laughs> but just not at the time. <laughs> just not at the time. But either way, you know, it's all good either way. You know? <laughs> in a wife at the time. Right. I'll tell you what you were interested in, though, were biceps. I <laughs> love this is. opening line right here. <laughs> and it's you, true. You guys got to hear this. So they're at this self improvement <laughs> seminar. He's out of the car, broke, recovering from opiates. She's divorced. <laughs> She's kind of in like the bar scene a little bit. I think you were at the time, right? Uh, Where you kind I of. I was like, actually coming. I was like, yeah. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I went through. I, I had never yeah. drank in my life, never did anything, and then about three month period of time, I did everything. You did everything <laughs> yeah. in that window. And so yeah, I, I was I was at that self improvement <laughs> seminar, hat on, no makeup, sweats every day. Yeah. That is a true story because I did not want a man to look at me. Mm. I didn't want to look at another man. Mm. And day two of the seminar, December sixth, two thousand eight. This guy comes up to me who mm. looks like a gym rat, mm -hmm. and he's I like, "I had my powerhouse gym shirt on. He did? <laughs> <laughs> got Actually, my forearms for the forearms coming out. It was a medium, of course. <laughs> I'm wearing one right now, bro. Yes. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he and I were the only two that um, that had our our lunches packed. So I was reaching into my cooler, pulling out this yeah. um, container, yeah. and he was like, 
I want to know what you did to get those biceps. <laughs> and I'm like, no. True so story. No, very true. first line I ever oh, ever I said her that, in my life. <laughs> and it came out like that. And I I'm like, it. oh. And, and, and here's the thing. At the time, I was like, this guy is hitting on me. Mm. I didn't want to be around him. So I kind of avoided him for the rest of the seminar. The next day, he showed up with a gift for me. He showed up with his stack system because he Whoa. really... And, and then I sat and talked to him uh, to the, the last day of the seminar. And mm. I realized... He re was not hitting on me. He really, truly wanted to know what exercises yeah. I did to get the biceps that I had, and he wanted to feed me. Show him the biceps, just so everybody knows. Like, just so you, know. you have to show him I mean, the biceps. Legit, you guys. Yeah. I mean, like, and I don't if, know. if you're listening, just just go jump on <laughs> jump on the channel, jump on YouTube, and you got to yeah. see her biceps. Yeah. They're yeah. really yeah. amazing. Go over to YouTube and check it out. Trust yeah. me, it's oh. ridiculous. So, <laughs> but, but yeah. And so what I was saying though is the one thing that's never changed is we have always. Mm known and been so appreciative that our meeting was for a reason yeah. like it's mm -hmm. just you cannot yep. cannot deny it our dreams also don't show up the way we would think so your dream woman your dream man didn't show up the way you would think nope actually <laughs> didn't <laughs> right? and, and also neither did really the show now, a really crazy backstory and i know you're, you're going to appreciate this here but um when i was losing everything and living out of my car i ended up running away came here to los angeles um, trying to start over. A buddy of mine landed me a couple gigs with other production companies, and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in a place for anything to happen yet. I didn't know that at the time, but I remember pitching to a couple different production companies here. I said, look guys, here's this concept of, you know, like I, I go and I surprise someone and I totally change their life, and more than anything, it's like, I wanna be the Ty Pennington of weight loss. Mm. And I told them that, mm. and I, I spoke it. Yes. I, and I, I wanted it, I wasn't ready for it, yeah. but I just kept saying Powerful. that to people. Powerful. And when I met with Heidi, it was one of our very first conversations, I filled her in on this dream. I was like, you know, what, what, if, what if I could be the Ty Pennington of weight loss and just go in and show these people how to do it the right way? So sure enough, fast forward to this conversation that with my friend, the casting producer, he says, let me talk to my boss. Boss calls back an hour later and says, yeah, hey, well, we can't fly out, you wanna drive out? Wow. So Heidi and I, we drive out, we map, what, what this show would be on their whiteboard. We ended up making two more trips out to LA within about two and a half, three weeks. Um, I mean, literally just driving back and forth, and, getting and used I to this. And I should say, I, I was only there in the meeting. I wasn't, I, I had trained 10 years prior. I was not a trainer at that time. I was only there in the meeting to protect him. Because when I met him, he had debtors coming after him everywhere. He had, owed hundreds of thousands of dollars this is in debt. Incredible. It was And to me, was, I actually, business, I, I love the business side of it. I yes. love it and I saw this, poor guy that I'm like, I can help you. I did loans, I bought and sold homes, I renovated them. I had that, that's actually what I did when I met him. And so I um, I poured into that and I'm like, you're not gonna go meet with these people in Hollywood mm. without me there because mm -hmm. you're not gonna give 10% of another company away <laughs> to somebody. Every company he had, mm. it was like he ended up being 20% of this and he was doing 100% of the work because he's like, Oh, you can shoot a video. I'll give you ten percent of my company. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just oh, everything. And I just so kept I selling was only there everybody. To take but you notes were, and but you were him. dating them, though. And yes, we were. We were because that was. Too. We were dating at the time. Is that what you call it, dating? She's blushing now. <laughs> Everyone, watch the video on YouTube. She's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Heidi's in the kitchen. Random phone call out of the blue, and it's the CEO of the production company. He's like, "Dude, we sold your show." I'm like, "What?" Mm. What does this mean? Because we were consultants on the development of the show and they made it really clear though that the, the, the host of the show was gonna be a celebrity trainer. Okay. Jillian, Bob, yeah. they were looking at Harley Pasternak and just some other amazing trainers in Hollywood. And um, I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, hold on. Hides, they sold the show. It's crazy. Wait, so, so who bought it? He's like, well, some cable networks are going back and forth, but ultimately, and he, the, the guy's, he's the king of, of building up the, the <laughs> suspension. He goes, yeah. Yeah. but ultimately, it was ABC, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> Man, ABC bought the show. I was like, so, who's the host? Mm. Long pause. Mm. You are. Oh my gosh. And then literally, it wasn't even a, it was a, mm. I did one of these, just mm. phone drop. I just looked over at Heidi. I said, I'm, I'm the guy. Wow. And I said, well, how? He said, well, they saw, they just saw the videos and they just, they want that, what went through your mind people. in that moment where you're like, I'm not ready for this? Yes. 
That's exactly what 1 happened. One million percent. And immediately, yep. 100, yep, absolutely. And I went, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap. Mm -hmm. It was literally, it, was an, it wasn't even an oh, yay moment. It mm -hmm. was an oh, crap moment. Yes. I said, what does that mean? He says, it means you pack your bags, you're leaving in five weeks. Mm. And I went, sign me up for another coaching seminar. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. We did you yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think the biggest reason, so Chris was under Gosh. the assumption that all of the transformations had happened, especially with David. His idea and his thought process was, it's because I fed him right and I moved him right. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize, and I could see it from the outside, but the reason David transformed for the first time with Chris and he never could in his life before was because Chris was giving him love. Like he was his best friend, he gave him that care. And that was such a hard thing for Chris to accept, no matter how much I explained that to him. Um, and he felt completely inadequate knowing, hey, I'm gonna do eight more transformations. Yeah. And in his mind, he didn't know how to life coach. And that's what he was doing. doing. He just didn't uh -huh. even realize he was doing it. The biggest thing, guys, is that that moment, the reason I asked Chris is, did you go, oh no, I'm not ready? That's the cue that you're stepping into your dream. Yes. Uh -huh. So if you don't have that response, you're not playing big enough. You're not going for your real dream. I, I love that. This is such a huge thing for people to get. I was pretty sure you were gonna say that. There should be a moment, all of you, where you get into this moment, you're like, I'm not ready. That's actually you stepping into your dream. It's yeah. the number one cue. What is some of the steps that you guys have learned from doing the show, post, po during and post the show, to, to transform yourself? That, let's just use physically for now, but I think yes. the same principles apply everywhere. What are some of the steps to, to change? How do you do it? I, Go ahead. I would love I, I to can, take I this can, one. Yeah. <laughs> we, we begin every transformation by laying out the, there's a true hidden path to transforming everybody's life. And it's been there, it's always been there, but it's just, it's so clouded by so much confusion. Everyone's looking for the, the right kind of diet, the right kind of exercise. The path is in integrity, and we can't have a conversation about transformation without having a conversation about integrity first. And this is what we cover. This is the secret sauce that you don't see on the show, but this is what's covered with everyone on day one. Okay. No joke, we talk about their diet and exercise. We cover that in about 45 minutes for the year. Done. Whoa. Then we say, now that that's over with, let's have a real conversation about transformation. Okay. None of you, and, and now we, we upset a handful of people in this very first comment because we need to get their attention. We say, look, you're all here because you don't have integrity. Yeah. And you could imagine that they just, they sit back, they're like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. F you dude. You know right. exactly what they're thinking. I said, yep. hold on, hold on. Now let me, let, yep. we need to explain this. Yep. First of all, let's talk about what integrity is. Integrity is doing what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it when no one else is watching. Now I guarantee you, you all have amazing integrity with everybody else in the world. If you tell your friend you're gonna show up tomorrow at noon, Nancy, when do you show up? She says 11.55, absolutely you do. If you tell them that you're gonna go ahead and pick up their kids, you're gonna grab you know, some coffee for their you know, book club mm -hmm. meeting, you're there on time. You do what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it but I just want to see a show of hands and we'll have, we'll have a group of 30 people before they begin their, their transformation. Show of hands, how many, how many people here said the diet starts Monday? And everyone goes, oh. And you see all the hands go up. How about 2015? It's gonna happen this year. Mm -hmm. Every hand goes up again. How about 2016? Let's try this again, every single hand. 2017. Mm -hmm. How about I'm gonna wake up at five o'clock tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning and do 30 minutes of cardio. <laughs> every hand goes up. <laughs> So you guys are great at making commitments and keeping those commitments to other people, but you cannot, mm. it, you can, but you do not keep commitments to yourself. And that's why you're all yep. here. And that's what we're gonna change. Mm. This is your year to take it all back. This is your year to completely change your life. But in order to do so, you need to honor yourself. You'd have to make yourself a priority. You, we are gonna teach you how to love yourself enough so that when you do, when you do give your word, you will honor that word to yourself. Mm. We believe in you. And you don't believe in yourself yet, but there's a formula to believing in yourself. And what we're going to do, and every single one of them, they're in such a deep, dark place because you know, the folks that we're working with, they're four, five, six hundred pounds that they're trying to get out. So we explain, in order for them to get there, what it was, and all we see, when we're looking out at this group of 30 people, it's not, I don't see 200 ex extra pounds of, of body fat on them. It's 200 pounds of broken promises to themselves. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You get it. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. And I, I know you get it because yeah. this is the life that you live because yeah. you, 
here. It's amazing. This this house that you've got, you. all the homes that you've got, what you've been able to create, it's incredible. Mm. It's because you have integrity. You have personal integrity first, mm. and then that translates into your integrity with everybody else. You just taught me something, just so you know. Aww. Big, it's huge thing you just taught me. I, mean, I want to tell you what it was, and I want you to talk about it, or you yeah. can talk about it, Heidi. So I actually... Probably at one of the roots of my content is how to build self-confidence. And I have consistently said for 25 years that self-confidence is the habit and process of keeping the promises that you make to yourself. You, yes. that's the having, same, yeah. having said that though, so I'm glad that we stand there. You just said something that's a layer deeper than I've said it before. And you said it's got a connection to needing to love yourself in order to do it. So one of the things I've not backed that up with enough Man, I just want you to know, like I'm processing that right now. Sure. Is I've not backed up enough with teaching them the reasons why they haven't. And so is it your conclusion that some of that has to do with not loving themselves enough in order to keep the promise? Is that yeah. part of it? Yeah, well, and I, it, it's that they don't wow. believe in themselves enough. Okay. Like when, when you try and fail and try and fail and try and fail so many times, mm. you don't believe you can do it. And, mm. and the, it's, it's all connected. The I don't believe I can do it and I don't love myself are directly They're, they're brother and sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so when yeah. one of them exists, you're gonna mm. not even try at mm. some point. Or mm. if you say something, you're like, hey, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z. You already know mm. before you say it or as you're saying it that you're not going to actually do it. How do you establish it? How do you break that pattern? Is it a social circle that they keep? Is it, what do you do to get them to begin to do so it? There, there's a lot of things. Okay. Well, first we, we establish why they are where they are. Because mm. we'll, ask, we'll ask all 30 of the individuals that are really struggling. They're in a deep, dark place. How do you feel about yourself? I hate myself. I hate myself. Look at me, I'm, I'm a disappointment. You hear this common denominator among everything. So let's map how you got there. And literally, remember, they didn't start there. They started with their esteem, their confidence, their, mm. um, you know, their, their self-love. It was at a certain level. And mm. then they made a promise and they broke that promise. Yes. And so their, your yes. integrity and your dignity, and dignity is that esteem, it's that confidence and self-love, they are intertwined. Mm. When you break your integrity, your dignity takes a hit. Mm. And then they do it again. And then they do it again. And then what happens though, that they, after a while, after so many, so many failures, this, you start making silent promises. Here's the catch. So it's like, hey, diet starts Monday, and everybody has been in that place where you, you tell your family and your friends, hey guys, I'm, diet is it's gonna start Monday, I'm doing it this time. That's usually where most people start. And after so many times that they, that they fail, that, you know, Wednesday, all of a sudden you know, you're in the break room and you're housing a pizza, and your coworker's like, dude, I thought the diet started Monday. You're like, okay, I'm never gonna tell them. When, I, when the diet starts Monday again. But integrity, personal integrity doesn't know the difference. Whether you say it out loud or whether you say it to yourself. And so they start making silent promises. Okay, diet starts Monday. And they'll say it to themselves. And sure enough, they break it. And every single time they go lower and lower and lower and their belief and their confidence and their self-love and their dignity, it just takes a hit till they find themselves at 400 pounds or 500 pounds or drinking. Start, you start drinking at 10 a.m., you start taking your, your opiates, you, whatever it is, because the thing is, you feel so low about yourself that you've lost your belief in yourself. Wow. So in order to get out, all we have to, it's so simple, we reverse that process. Mm. And we say, it is our job. Now that we, and we, look, we covered diet and exercise in 45 minutes. Yeah. Now it's our job as your coaches. We're gonna get you out of the hole the same way you got in and we're gonna teach you how to love yourself and how to believe in yourself and how to be absolutely unstoppable. And at the end of one year, 365 days, you're gonna do something extraordinary that the world, is their jaws are gonna drop when they see what you're able to do. And that's exactly what we do. With, we've done it 76 times. Crazy. And it's humans, it's the power of the human mind and the human heart. And we say, look, here's where you are. You're in the lowest of low. You make one simple promise to yourself and we let everybody select what that promise is. It might be five minutes on a treadmill. It might be drink an extra quart of water. It might be eat breakfast. I don't care if it's pancakes or oatmeal. It yeah. doesn't matter. Make a promise to yourself and keep that promise. Mm. And that is, that is what we call their power promise. Power That's, promise. That That's power promise. It keeps them in the yeah. game of transformation. It keeps the transformation going. Yeah, oh. it's, a, it's the power promise, but the idea oh behind gosh, it is I'm to- gosh, I'm loving this. You have to keep yourself winning. You have to keep Momentum. people winning. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, you just said mm -hmm. the next thing. It's like once you know you can win at something, when you make one small commitment, and for some of our people, believe it or not, it's as simple as brushing your teeth every day. Mm -hmm. Like what is one thing you can do every single day that you know without a shadow of a doubt you can do forever and ever and ever. Yep. Do that, Gosh, you check so it off the list and you win and you create something called integrity momentum. That's one of the words that, the oh phrases that we God. use quite often. And once you build that integrity momentum and you master your first power promise, again, say it's just brushing your teeth every day for two weeks. It seems so small mm -hmm. and it is 
so small, but when you know that's all you've committed to and you've successfully done it for two weeks, yep. you feel like a champ yep. and you feel like, hey, if I can do that, what else can I do? Yep. So then it's like, all right, let's add one more thing and you'll continue to build and build mm. until you're, well, and, and the thing I love about, sorry, about this whole topic the most is you learn that the power of your word has value, like your word yes. has value. Yes. And when you speak something, you start to believe that you can actually make that happen. Mm. In mm -hmm. every area of your life, not just weight loss and transformation, it could be, hey, I wanna, I wanna build a multi-million dollar home you on got a cliff it. in Three Arch Bay. I'm going to do that. <laughs> your word is so powerful because you know everything you say comes to fruition and you can manifest it. I probably have not ever had something said, and I don't mean this disrespectful to any of the other unbelievable guests that I've had, but I don't think something's ever been said like the last seven minute segment here that I agree with more. Oh, like, and everyone, I wanna stay on this because it's so wonderful. Because you do it in the most dramatic evidentiary way, yeah. which is someone loses hundreds of pounds. If you were just listening to this and you kind of started to hear it because it was entertaining, but you went, that doesn't apply to me because I don't have 250 pounds of extra weight. You have your addiction. Your addiction could be hiding from your dream and watching television. So as you, the condition you show up to the show in could be, you've had this big dream and maybe you've shoved it so far back in the back of your mind now because of these broken promises that it's not 200 pounds of weight, it's not alcohol or drugs, it's not even maybe a bad relationship, it could be all those things. It could be just you're not living your true purpose. Right. You've moved all the yes. way away from it and you're lacking these promises. Yes. And if you started to make them, you're gonna get life momentum again. And I so agree with it being something initially that seems so basic yep. and that you get credit for. So keep, if you don't mind, what are you doing some that, more, please. It is all about making, it's, it's when you, when you give your word to yourself, again, whether spoken or whether silent, following through with that, like it could be, I want to start a podcast. Yes. Or I want yes. to create a product. Mm -hmm. Stop talking about it, because every time you say you're going to do it and you don't do it, you lose more belief in yourself. You're going to fall further and further into that rut, and you won't be able to get out. Well, we have the but, saying too, your word has to be more powerful than your reasons or ex your oh, wow. excuses why you cannot. Wow. Your word has to have power over your excuses. What makes me think when you're doing it, like I watch you both talk with this energy yeah. uh, and uh, it's like, uh. it's like, like, and by the way, that is part of your giftedness <laughs> too, is you're transferring energy to people, all you coaches out there. Part of it is just transfer of energy to people. Energy can be belief, love, yeah. physical energy like we're talking <laughs> about here. But what happens, everybody, that they're giving you is, especially those of you that if you, the, the body is the best place to me to transform your life. Yeah. Because you can create evidence there. Even if it's that you're not 400 pounds or 200 pounds overweight, but you're like, I wanna get more fit. Yeah. The body's a great place to begin because what starts to happen, everyone, when you start transforming your body, this mind starts to be like, as Heidi just said, it's almost like a weapon. As they begin to grow, as they begin to, they say, okay, you look, I, I, I make a commitment and I'm keeping that commitment. And after they keep it for a while, it's like, oh, wait, what else can I do? Oh, I'll make another commitment. I'll keep that commitment. Wait, what else can I do? Now, the social group around, that's incredibly important, obviously, because it's your, you know, there is, I know a lot of people say, you know, you're the average of the five people that you yeah. spend the most time with. Yeah. And there, there can be some truth to that. But at the same time, the reality of it also is that for a lot of the folks, you know, they seem to be a little bit. I wouldn't say stuck in their situation, but the thing is that their social system, whether it's their aunts, their uncles, the people that they're immediately living with or their, their, their friends, um, they, so many of those people are not supportive of the transformation. Mm -hmm. And that is a very difficult place to be when one person has this deep longing desire for change and they begin to take those steps, they start to believe in themselves, and the other people around them start cutting them down. Yeah. And so we always say, instead of, you don't necessarily cut off those people because mm -hmm. the thing is, they are, they, you do have friends and family and there's, mm -hmm. there's some, sometimes a need for that, but it's important for you to expand your group. <laughs> And when totally you expand you. your group, yeah, and, and, and you also have to understand, coming from a place of compassion, those people, like your, your drinking buddies that want to go to Buffalo Wild Wings on Friday night and they're like, oh, can't invite Ed anymore yeah. because Ed's not drinking, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Or Ed doesn't want to have the chicken wings because Ed's all healthy now, yeah. you know? Yes. We get, our people get that all the time. Yes. So at the same time, why are they saying that? 
Mm. Where is it really coming from? Mm. It's coming from a place of fear. They don't want to lose Ed. They it. love you. Yeah. And they, you are comfortable for them. And, and this is their family and you're their tribe. Mm. So a lot of times they might be sabotaging you, not because they, it's not out of malevolence or maliciousness. Yes. It's just because they're just terrified to lose you. And they just, they love you so much. And they're, they're so scared because you're elevating your life. Yes. And so it's shining a huge spotlight on the areas of their life where they're too scared to change. This is the hard question. Someone loses 200 pounds. They're in your environment, I want to call it. They're with you through a yes. year. And it's two years from now. What has been the results post the structure around somebody? In other words, right. do you find a lot of people go backwards? And if they do go backwards, what do the ones who have ba go backwards have in common? And the reason I ask you that is, I say to people all the time in the business world, I have more friends who used to be rich than are currently rich. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, it's really interesting. I have more six. I have more friends who used to be successful at something than actually currently are. Yes. So there's something that happens where people stop pursuing their identity, stop the improvement process. I'm not sure what it is, but what is your experience with the two, three, four year type results and the ones who don't stay fit? Yes. What do they have in common? What's the things they do that shouldn't be done? I, I, we, we, both we, might have, have, we have an answer to yeah. this okay. um, because that has been oh, one of our greatest like points of pain mm -hmm. is solving that problem. I know, me because, too. Because, um, it you know, and, and let's again in all transparency, there it, we we were the the hosts and trainers and coaches on a show that was on television. Mm -hmm. And television brings such a unique ingredient to transformation, mm. in that it actually plays off of the individuals and not, not in a bad way at all, mm -hmm. but ego. Because what happens is that no matter what, when we, we would run for 365 days and that individual knows that at the end of the 365 days, their story will be told, whatever that story is. And so they don't want to look bad in front of the world. Mm -hmm. And so there's this constant driving force behind it. And we can sit there and we can teach them integrity and we can take them through that process. And it's, it is real and it's happening. And we actually get to experience the beauty of a human being believing in themselves and loving themselves over the course of a full year. That's real. Yeah. You know, that, that's genuinely real. And at the end, they've lost 200 pounds. They get up on stage, their chest is out, their chin's high. They don't care about the, the fact that they lost 200 pounds, they're a promise keeper to themselves. They've got integrity and dignity, like they're living. Then, and but the, there's also that pressure, that yes. constant pressure that was always there. That goes away. All the lessons were still there. They, the lessons were learned, but then they go back to Raleigh, North Carolina. They go back to Topeka, Kansas. And they go back to that social circle they go back to their old daily grind and everything and sure enough all those old triggers start to fall back in and we've had over 50 percent of our people not gain all the way back we've only had a handful gain all the way back mm -hmm. but i would say probably two-thirds of our people have gained yep 40 50 sometimes even 100 pounds yeah. back yep. now, granted we've helped them lose like 200 sure they're they're doing better than they were before but they've still gained weight back mm -hmm. They still, and, and here's, the, here's the thing, and again, when it comes to, it could be weight loss, it could be business, it mm -hmm. could be whatever it is that you're looking to do. We can trace every single one of those backslides as they backslide and start gaining weight down to one single broken promise. It all comes back to integrity. Every, every, and I, I, I implore everybody who's listening, even take, take some moments to think about your friends who have who've fallen yep. and they've lost all their money and everything. It goes, it all can be traced back to a single broken promise because yes. whether it was one day after the show, a week after the show, a month after the show, a lot of them, they maintained for a while and then all of a sudden after a month, two months, three months, they started to gain weight and they started to gain weight. And then when we they started actually, to get comfortable. And then when, when we go back to them, we said, what was the moment? So we go back to them, what was your promise? It all comes down to that foundation. What, what was that commitment that they made? Was Great. it drinking an extra quart of water? Was it walking on the treadmill for five minutes? What was it? Where, and what, what was your power promise? And they go, oh my gosh, wow. I stopped keeping it. I remember there was one day that my husband needed me to pick up the kids from, from school and then this happened and that happened and I didn't do it. Mm. And then the next day came along and I said, it was just a fluke, but you know what? I did it yesterday, I'm just gonna do it again today. And one day turned into two, two turned into three, three turned into four, and four turned into four years. And now here I am, and I'm 
a hundred pounds heavier. You link it back to breaking the power promise. Yeah. Every single one. Then, wow. Yeah. Every okay. single one across wow. the board. I believe that's right. Yep, I, I believe I that's right. I want to add to wow. that if I can. It's a slightly different tactical way of looking at it. Wow. But but that's that is spot on when it comes to what actually happened. Mm -hmm. And and every time you can always find that one thing. Mm -hmm. but, but I think you could. I'm so sorry. That's the same reaction that they have when we all of a sudden trace it all the back, all the way back. Mm. The gentleman that helped lose 400 pounds, mm. he ended up gaining almost all of the back. He got up to 600 pounds again. He traced it back to one day when he walked into a gas station and he, he was free of soda for five years straight. He walked in there and he went to go put his cup under the Diet Coke and he saw regular Coke, he said, and he thought to himself, I'm gonna regret this. Filled it up with Coke, went from 250 pounds to 600 pounds again. And he traced it all the way back and when we finally identified that, he went, wow, wow. that was it. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay, that's and that because that's a really important thing. And I think, yeah. like we said, everyone can trace it back to one thing. But if we look at it from a different perspective, the reality is that the ones that understood the difference between something we call the transformation game and something we call the weight loss game completely have had an easier time What's keeping the, the weight off. So, weight loss game, you set a goal in the weight loss game, and you do anything you can to reach the goal. The transformation game there's actually a purpose behind the goal. Mm. And you won't necessarily always do everything to reach the goal. You'll do everything to fulfill your purpose and understand and know your why. Mm. It's like the weight loss game. We had people, like Chris said, for camera that would do anything they could to hit their way and so they could win the prize or you know not be looked at this way where they were forgetting all the foundational principles. They were forgetting and we can preach it till we are blue in the face. Mm. It's not about losing weight. It's mm. about your integrity at the end of the day. How do they get access to you? For more of this, so it's the it's transform. If they go into the app store, right? Yes. What, what are they going to get if they do that? What is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> they're going to get but, a whole new yeah, life. I know. Like, they're going to get. Gosh, Ed, you're so fun to talk to. Like, we, I, I get seriously like, <laughs> I was going to say, well, there's a whole story behind it. That's <laughs> okay. So. Obviously, with the show, we were working with what are they gonna get? 15 people a year. Okay, you're, you're <laughs> going to get everything. Look, we've, so we've mapped transformation, and the, we, we started mapping it back in the early 2000s, like the whole journey. And so mm -hmm. our, we made a commitment to ourselves on season one, where we said, when, when look, we, we can only work with 15 people a year, but we've got over a million emails from people asking for help. And we said, our, it is our responsibility to create something with integrity for them. Mm -hmm. So how can we teach them what we're doing here? So we literally, we took three years to build the largest transformation digital platform in the world. And this and is so, physical. We're talking physical here. Yes, yeah. I mean, you yeah. download the yeah. app, you tell the app who you are. It's gonna ask your biometrics, age, weight, height, gender. You can tell it what you wanna do. Yeah, I wanna lose weight. I wanna get lean and shredded. I wanna maintain, I wanna, I wanna gain some weight and muscle. Well, and then it'll ask you, well, what do you have available to you? At home, body weight, you can do an iron gym, you can do a cross training facility, you can do anything. Yeah. And then we literally we map the whole thing for you. Yeah. We create a totally custom blueprint to guide you through transformation. But every week, we jump on there with life lessons. We talk about exactly what we just talked about today. Cool. We talk about integrity, conquering your fear, identity, surrounding yourself with other people with support. And we actually, it's not just an app. We actually have coaches that, that will support you in the process okay. with the app if you choose that you want that one-on-one -on -one support with the coach who does exactly what we do. So it's it's a whole ecosystem that we're building. Wow. You know, and, and we're about speaking things into existence because yeah. like that's, it's happened for us. And yeah. there is some, in, there is power beyond what I can even comprehend behind that. And yeah. I but we, add, yeah, we are building a full ecosystem This is your life stream. Yeah. Just so you know, this off is, camera guys, this is oh. their life stream. It, this yeah. is the culmination of their is, life's work. It yes. really yeah. is. And I want to say for those people that don't want to buy an app, mm -hmm. that you don't want to pay for an app, I would even step, I, I, I'm all about free. I want yeah. people You're to like, live hey. their yeah. best yeah. life. Yeah. And yeah, I would give you, in fact, this weekend, I have three people staying at my home. It's just how, we, the only way we know to be, we have the most amazing free Facebook community. Okay. And so yes. I highly okay. encourage everyone listening that wants to take that step or just wants to be a part of something okay. amazing. How do they go there? Find it. Facebook search transform with Chris and Heidi app users. Okay. You'll land in right now. It's a group of 40,000 people. It was created Whoa. by the people yeah. for the people. They're so, I mean, just the stories and the love and the energy. It is a place where 
people grow and become their best selves. We, and we talked about expanding your circle. If you don't have that love and support at home, yeah. that's what this community is for. Mm. We built it for, and it, again, the people came and they continue to love and support each other. So join us. If you don't get that love and support and you don't have to be an app user, just, just join the community. It's absolutely free and everybody supports each other it's in the process. Ab absolutely free. Okay, okay, so there we go there. Then also, and I wanna say, once we tell you where to find them, I'll tell you another reason to find them. And I don't, I don't do this on my show normally to this extent, but also in Instagram for both of you. Instagram. And then probably your YouTube channel for now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine for now, right? I will say I'm, I'm in the process of creating okay. one for Chris and a joint, but mine, okay. I, and it's real Heidi Powell everywhere you go. The, re YouTube. the reason I think that you two are special, I told you this when we met, is that there are skill, there are people that are good one-on-one, -on -one, and there are people that are good in groups. It's a very rare skill for someone to be able to truly transfer energy through a camera or through that's why certain people get larger followings in social media or certain, frankly, yeah. podcasts or TV shows do. They have the ability to move energy through a camera. It's not an easy skill. It's something both of you can do. It's, a, it's rare that both can do it. And so the other thing you get by engaging with them is it's, it's like what you're feeling right now. You all listening to this, this is rare, or watching it, feel like you're here with us. And you watch a lot of people talk, guys, where you're just, that's not the case. You're almost passively, you feel like you're here with us because that's a skill that they have. So they can influence you and move you. So I want you to engage with them. Now, in, 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 I just, I love your what you're doing. Thank you. We're running out of time. Okay, but, dang but, it. But one of my, I know, I feel that way really strongly too. <laughs> I know, right? Like I really do. We have to do this again. We will, we're gonna, we're gonna do it again. I, I can already tell, but I, but I wouldn't let it go. One of the things I like about both of you also, I love, is there's also this, this, the two of you, there's this relationship. <laughs> and the same principles, and by the way, it's cool on your YouTube channel, you cover some of this like Q&As with the two yeah. of you and stuff like that, right? <laughs> what I love, and I just want everyone to just get a little extra gift at the end, it's probably a preview of where we'll go next time, everyone, but I wanna have a little gift here. I have a lot of content, but one of the things I talk about is vulnerability is a gateway to magnify all other emotions. Yes. It's also the way that you connect with people. It's what you're both great at. I am a super flawed human who's willing to share some of my flaws with people, <laughs> not all of them, that so people can relate to me. I have ones right. that people don't know, right? But I have, I have flaws that I'm willing to share with people. I think that's true of the two of you too. We're not trying to be perfect. And the two of you don't propose to have a perfect relationship all the no. time either as well. So this remember true. this, they're running their business. They've been doing transformations. Let's be real, there was a transition. You had a very popular television show, not exist anymore. That had to be a difficult transition identity-wise, I would imagine. Yeah. Four children, yeah. a business, public personas, like there's a lot there. Sure. Just how do you navigate your relationship? And if you're being honest, what are one or two of the significant issues the two of you kind of deal with over and over again? Yeah. That's a good one. I can um, absolutely yeah. speak, to, speak to this. <laughs> you, you just hit about four points right there. <laughs> that are, oh. and, and we just so just for full transparency, mm. we actually see a marriage therapist okay. here um, in mm. LA. We okay. travel because it's really, really important to us to make sure that foundation is solid and we remember like our, our wedding ring says saw my that. best friend mm -hmm. and his is my best friend and that. it's to remember we're not husband and wife we are mm -hmm. on paper but we're best friends and mm -hmm. how I, I have to remind myself of this would I talk to my best friend the way I'm talking to Chris right now mm -hmm. or do I need to change that am I talking to him as a husband that is stuck with me um, and so keeping wow. that in mind is really helped but I will say um, it, it has not been easy and, mm. but it's been amazing. And mm. I think the harder it has been, and it's true, we've gone through some really massive, difficult things um, that would break most, I think would break most marriages. Um, mm. But I think as a result of working on ourselves and working on each other, uh, working on our relationship, it is so much better than I ever could have imagined. Now we'll probably get in the car and something will happen and we'll end up fighting. We'll be bickering in about 15 minutes, I'm yeah, sure. Often I I'm curious, let us have a picture if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. How often is there a disagreement, a pretty good one? Well, I mean, yesterday, even as we are getting yesterday? into the See, hotel. See, this is the beauty. I, I, I didn't, I didn't like, like her tone. What was yesterday? <laughs> so dead. I didn't like her tone. Well, and so I was asking her a question because you were busy responding oh, to an email and I was simply just asking her a question. She's like, I'm busy responding to it. So I took out my phone and I was recording her tone. And so I was intentionally, <laughs> so I was intentionally like, hey babe. So, and then I was talking all nice. And she's like, 
I will literally play it for you right now. Hold on. I, I swear, I will play it for you right oh now. My I didn't like her tone. Right. So I left her in the car, and I got our bags out, and I went huffing and puffing into the hotel. Okay. I checked his in, and I went up to the room. Do you remember this now? Well, now I do. And I, all I remember, I get in my zone, right, okay. where I'm like this. It was one of our people. He really needed our help. He was struggling really badly, and so I was trying to yeah. make him feel better. Okay. Hold on, real fast. Let me. <laughs> I'm, I'm so ready to play this. So then I remember walking. I remember walking into the hotel, and he wasn't there. And I had my stuff, and I said, "They're like, are you okay, Miss?" I'm like, "Yeah." Did did a guy like <laughs> really best guy? Yeah. Did, did he really sh muscles check in? They're like, "Yeah." He said you were coming. I'm like. Do you know what room we're in? So I'm trying to call her as well. Uh -huh. And I'm so not anyway. picking up because I'm like, I didn't like her attitude. So then she finally picked up and I said, hey, I'm sitting on the elevator. Mm. I'm let, not letting the door close because it's going to, finally, he ends up after a couple minutes giving me the room mm -hmm. number. Nice. So, but I had to give her my peace of mind. I was like, I don't like your attitude, so you need to keep your distance from me right now. See, I've learned <laughs> I just don't fight back. We've, we've got, I kind of am like, uh, hey, you understand how to navigate. I say, yeah, I say, do you want to go work out? Let's go, you know. Okay, that's a good tip. Yeah. You, you say when, I'll, I'll, I'll play it for you after the show. Okay. <laughs> if you want, but no, I can totally you, play it right now. Are you okay if you play it? I don't let's care. I'm curious what of. my tone was. Let's this is actually good here, for here, me. Here, put a mic, guys. I'll tell you. See how calm you're talking. You're very calm. Babe, I'm just giving a quick overview because Jan just sent us a text and I want to make sure no one's listening to anyone but you and I. That's it. I'm sending this to the team. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I was just Oh, saying. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're being overly calm on yeah, purpose. Exactly. I, I was trying I hear to make you. sure our supplement, our supplement line was not going in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, okay, so, I'll be honest with you. Neither one, that doesn't seem that dramatic to it, me. So, it wasn't. But I no, love how you just played that, sensitive. by the way. Did, does he do that, by the way? Will he, will he like, kind of... Play up the the disagreement, escalate it, or do you, and you de-escalate, or does it eventually and you just get away and calm down? Completely shifted. So I'll I'll say um, that was awesome. <laughs> who, who he married? Mm. Um, and to his credit, because I do think more who he. I am a very different person than who Chris married, mm -hmm. and it's because I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I I, I just kind of was like there to. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it, it has been rocky because there's been an evolution of mm -hmm. who I've become, and and at, at, he was he was yep. the man, and still mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. me. There is no man mm -hmm. like Chris, but it is mm -hmm. as as the dynamic of a relationship shifts, no matter what it is, you kind of come together. The puzzle pieces fit perfectly mm -hmm. as we were, and so mm -hmm. as someone or a side starts to develop or change, yep. it does throw it off a little bit. And there have been some growing pains around that. It's like I—I I was always behind the scenes on the show for the mm -hmm. first two and a half years. Uh, yeah, two and a half years. Yep. It was me in Arizona having people come see with us. No one knew, and it wasn't, and and me doing the behind the scenes stuff where he was flying because it just one person couldn't do it. And it was when the producer saw that they started pulling me on camera. And Chris, like to his credit, he was my biggest advocate and getting mm -hmm. on camera was the most uncomfortable thing it's hard for me. to believe i right mean now. Mm -hmm. i was te terrified mm. terrified of failing terrified of looking bad I, everything but i stepped outside my but comfort zone it, it but that was to, tough. it took off and people they loved her and mm. it was great and as it started to go again i was always the man yeah. and 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 everyone kind of supported it and as her brand started to grow I found myself like re oh, harboring resentment toward her. Mm -hmm. And this is just after like lots of reflection here, like harboring resentment and not wanting it to be bigger than mine. Yeah. Because of pride, because of ego, because of the male ego. But also when I really started doing some digging, like deep down, I was terrified of her not needing me anymore. Yep. And then I was on. scared of her leaving me. And that's, I'm just be, being totally real. Yes. And when I, when I finally peeled back all the layers, that's what it came down to. I didn't want her to not need me anymore. Brother, you're unreal. You are unreal. Well, because that that's, we said this earlier in the show, you're incredible. This big, strong, buff stud, like <laughs> I help people. And then you strip it all the way down. But the power of this is, because I've seen this with me, in business relationships, in yeah. marriage, everything. If you strip it all back, guys, well, why, why, why? You're worried someone's leaving. Yeah. Like yeah. if you just get to it, like yeah. that's so honest. Like eventually when you strip all the things, well, what if this, what if this, what if this? It leads to this place of this fear that someone's gonna leave. Yeah. And it's just miraculous. It's amazing to me that such a strong man can show 
what would appear to be weaknesses, but I actually think those are strengths. I think Thank acknowledgement you. of stuff like that is like takes a really strong person. So even in, in Heidi's case saying, look, I am the one who's changed and grown a lot. That takes a strong person to admit these things. I think the two of you, by the way, I, I just like, I was fan, I, I, I just think the two of you are extraordinary. Like, I, you're extraordinary. You. Well, we feel the same we, we way, about, the same you. way well, about you, Ed. Yeah. Like, it, it's incredible what yeah. you've done and what you've built and what you continue to build and the, the people that you, you motivate and inspire. Like, you're, you're here on earth for a very powerful reason. You, you are bro. a... You are definitely a tool that Thank he's you, using yeah. to, to well, change a lot of lives. There are millions of people who would agree with you that I am definitely a tool. <laughs> for sure. Trust me. There are millions of people. There are millions of people who are nodding with you right now, going, You finally described this guy perfectly. He's In the freak, nicest way possible. He's a freaking tool. No, you're <laughs> I did not mean that. I know exactly, brother. I know exactly what you meant. No, I appreciate that. And I do feel like we're gonna do this again. I, I I just feel like I already know what's going to happen, that this is going to be one of these viral things that takes off because you just don't get this kind of insight from people that have achieved what the two of you have achieved. So last thing I'm gonna, before we go, I want to give them just a, a gift if we would. Yeah. Okay? So I covered a little bit. And by the way, the reason I want you to follow them on social is because you'll get almost this mini reality show that you're watching right here <laughs> on their marriage, on their family, with their beautiful children. It's like it's a it's kind of a blended family initially too yeah. because Heidi had a couple kids when they met and it, and it's just but they're just a family. They're just mm -hmm. this amazing family just trying to help people, just trying to make a difference. So, someone's watching this quick answer. I want to change my life. You've given me all these keys, right? Today. Yes. I need to start right now something. I want to start losing weight. I want to start my business. I want to start finding a better relationship. I want to start pursuing my faith again. Just give me one thing, each of you one thing, that you would say, begin here. What would you tell me to do? Tough question, huh? It's super easy. Okay, cool. Make one small promise to yourself. In that division, whatever, wherever you're going, whatever you want to do, make one commitment that you know you can keep that will get you further toward your goal, okay. but something you can keep every single day. Okay. Every day. Okay. I would say that first, and but since I can also add one other mm. thing, speak it into existence. Yeah. Don't mm. just keep it up here. Write it down. Enroll other people. Mm. There's a whole new level of accountability that comes with that. Mm. And so it's really important that, that to manifest it, keep creating it. Mm. You know, you, you had Dr. Joe Dispenza mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. and he, everything starts with a thought, then mm -hmm. the thoughts turn into words, and words turn into actions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and et cetera. So um, you, it starts up here, you gotta get it out, and you have to mm -hmm. make it a reality. Okay, awesome stuff. This is why I do the show. This Thank is why I do the show. Like when I pictured my show, this is what I pictured. Aww is like the ultimate version of it, what we did here today. So I'm so you grateful for it. You created it, yeah. and look, we're here. And you showed up, so thank you so much, thank you guys. Thank you, Ed. Everybody, I know you love today. As always, share the show, will you? I mean, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the audio. More people, as you know, you just experienced it. They need to, they need to know what's happening here. They need to learn these things. They need to be inspired. Remember this also, every day on Instagram, the Max Out Two Minute Drill. Every day I make a post, 7.30 to 8 Pacific time. That's 10.30 to 11 Eastern. Right in that window I make a post. Engage with me there, make a comment. Everyone who does that, turn your notifications on. Everyone does it first two minutes, I pick a winner every day. They get, would you do one call? Would you do a call yeah. with a coach? Of course. Okay. Oh, so, yes. so there we go. Yeah. So one of you is going to get a chance to get a coaching call with them. You get a coaching call with me, my other guests, Max Out Gear, my book, tickets to see me speak. We're going to do one soon where you come on my jet with me to a city and we just talk for five, six hours and then go have dinner. So engage with me. If you miss the first two minutes, just make a comment every day. And I'm going to pick a winner. There are people that just comment every day because I want to connect with you. I want to see your comments. I read them. I respond. By the way, here's a little secret. Those of you that start to connect with other people on there and comment on comments, you got a really good chance of getting picked as well. So you may want to do that. So follow me on Instagram, share the show with everybody. God bless you and Max out. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like more, click the videos right here. They're exactly what you need to see next. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and become a part of the Max Out community. And tell me what you think about the videos in the comments below. I read all of them every week and I select winners that get all kinds of prizes, gear, coaching calls with me. Make a comment.